and welcome to Tea Time with Jules. I'm Jules, and today I have another reaction video for you guys. I freaking love this group, Pentatonix. I used to listen to them all the time, especially when I was in my own acapella group back in college. <laughs> Those are the good days. It was like pitch perfect back then. <laughs> uh, so today we're gonna be listening to Creep by Pentatonix. <laughs> I am so excited. Let's do this. When you were here before I couldn't look you in the eye You're just like an angel Your skin makes me cry You flow like a feather In a beautiful world You're so very special I wish I was special But I'm a creep Oh my god, I have to pause it. My senses are overwhelmed. I love everything about this. The harmonies are sick. This is what you get when you just have like voices. Well, they have a pretty cool beat. I'm like, is that somebody singing the beat or is that an electronic beat? I, I have to keep listening to it. I can't really tell. But these harmonies are so good. I live for this stuff. Okay, let's finish it. <laughs> Oh my god, guys, that was too good. That was too good. I love when they come to, like, when you have something that's so complex, those harmonies, like, how do they, that is like the pinnacle of creativity, of art, of creating something that's your own. I love this song, Creep, and I love most of the covers that I've heard of it, but this is like something of its own, its own category. <laughs> um, and I love at the end when they come together in unison just for that like last little melody. It's so good. I wanna know your guys' thoughts. I wanna know what you liked about it, what you think about it. If you like acapella, if you're in an acapella group, I wanna know. Please comment below and hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! Oh. Hey y'all, my name's Carrie. Welcome. Uh, this is brand new. I'm all sort of sort of getting everything set up here, but I'm 
cozy set here in my little home studio that I'm working on building. And uh, there are just a couple things I want to get off my mind grapes, if you will. So, uh, yeah, something I want to talk about uh, today, which uh, we'll sort of dive right into, are, uh, this is sort of this current event. Uh, people seem to be all up in arms about this Little Mermaid. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Um, Disney, in an effort to save face and seem, uh, I don't know if the term is woke, uh, maybe the term is up to date, um, is... Um, Doing all, they're they're doing all sorts of things to um, to make them a, seem like a less problematic company. And I know before I get into some of this, this is just an opinion. It's just an opinion. All right, so you don't have to try and drag me or get all up in arms about anything. I'm just going to express an opinion here. And we have to be very, very careful, right, when talking about these kinds of things, um, especially because of who I am, where I come from, and the things I've enjoyed in my life because of my privilege. I tend to take a different uh, point of view uh, than, than most people on most things. And what I'm seeing here are some people going, Ariel's white. And some people here going, it's a fictional character. This can be played by literally anybody. And it, I don't see why it's such a big deal. Um, to me, sort of sitting on the sides, taking in both sets of those opinions, I'm wondering, maybe, just maybe, why do we keep rehashing stuff from like 30 years ago and just kind of covering up, covering it up on the surface? Um, that to me is what starts to kind of sniff of like, <laughs> hmm, something here doesn't smell right. Uh, Disney, good on you for taking any steps at all to uh, be a more inclusive and a more approachable company. But um, something that I'm seeing, it seems like this might be a minor fix on the face of it rather than actually making true progress. Um, of course, what do I know? This is just my opinion. So, you know, it's sort of like um, just taking work from 30 years ago and I don't know what the word would be, injecting ethnicity into it, I'd be much more interested to see a story that's being told um, by people of color, people of culture, um, LGBTQIA plus people, um, gender fluid and queer people. These are the stories that I think are starting to um, come to the forefront. And that is interesting work, right? Uh, don't get me wrong. I think The Little Mermaid was a classic back in the 90s. I think it is just fine as a movie. Why are we just dragging stuff out from the past and remaking it? I'd be interested to see, maybe not a new story, but uh, something that's led uh, by, by someone who's not like me. Now, there is an interesting piece of work I do have to mention here, because this is something that I think, um, at when I saw it, and this was a few years ago, um, but I think it still holds true. It's a really, really fine piece of American musical theater. And that is uh, the, the sketch Nunca Land. And it's from HBO's Random Acts of Flyness. If you haven't seen it, please, please check it out. You can find it on YouTube uh, or you can watch it on HBO. But this is something that obviously had the eyes of um, black and, and people of color. Um, it had their eyes on it. And you can tell. Uh, it's a wonderful interpretation of J.M. Barry's uh, Peter Pan. 